Hey guys, so this is the second step in our hammer project. So as you can see I have uh, my hammer glued together. It's nice and strong, nice and tight. I don't feel it wobbling in any way. Um, so you know you want to do a couple checks before you get too far into the next step just to make sure you did this first step correctly. Well, it looks like we are good to go. So it's okay that some of these edges are a little uneven. It's okay that this handle is still rough. It has marks on it. It's okay that I can see a little bit of glue. That's all stuff that we are going to begin to start fixing. But the first thing we need to do is come up with a plan. So this second step is our planning step. So I went online and I, I looked up different types of wooden mallets and decided how I wanted to design this wooden mallet. So to give you a rough idea what I'm looking for here, let's move my tools to the side. I kind of want to start at the end of the hammer. I'll just draw a profile. So that's the end of my hammer. I'm going to have about an inch or so where it's flat and maybe just rounded. So those corners will just be rounded. And then I'm going to slowly, or I guess softly, transition that into a curve. That's just going to curve down. And I can't go too deep. I don't have a ton of material here to work with, but I, I can go a little bit. And then I, I, I want to do these small kind of round pieces here for my grip. And that's going to get into another one. And another one on the bottom side. Another one again. And another one again. And you know what? I think I, let's see, for my size hand, I probably want to do four of those. So we'll just do four of those, make sure I have a good size grip. And then we're going to do the same transition out of the piece. So I'm just going to quickly transition up and go back to a straight rounded piece. Transition up and again go back to a straight rounded piece. So those are just rounded corners. So I have that labeled out, planned and ready to go. These pieces here, and it's okay, you know, if your sketch is a little, a little more loose, these aren't perfect curves or anything. It doesn't have to be perfect when you're sketching this out. But I do recommend coming up with a plan, sketch it out a little bit and see how it goes. So I think that's going to be about my handle. When I look at it from the end and up, that's about where I want the handle. That's about the good size for my size grip. And now I just need to think about what am I doing with this top piece here? Well, for this particular hammer, I don't think I want to do much, but I do think I might throw in a little bit of a curve, maybe here at the top, just a, a gentle inward curve. And you know, I might even adjust that and come a little further. So these are things I'm going to play around with a little bit. And then for the back of the hammer, um, so if this is the front on the front side of my name, maybe that'll be the back. Maybe I'll just give that a little bit straighter back, something like that. You can have any design you want. I'm going with just kind of something that makes it look a little ornamental and gives it a little bit of, um, I don't know, unique, uniqueness to it. So I can probably come up a little bit further here. And then we'll just call that, that's where my hammerhead is. So there's that, there's my handle. There's my handle design. Now let's just come up with a quick thing for the, the mallet head. So in this particular case, I think what I would like to do is chamfer these corners. I'm going to sand this off, so I might as well just draw on this anyway. Um, I think I want to chamfer these corners all the way around and on the sides too. So all the way around it has a nice chamfered look. So all that is when I sketch it out here is it's simply a square without the corners drawn in. I just don't connect the corners. And then I come back 
and give those a 45 degree chamfer. So there's my 45 degree chamfer for the top. And I would just say, um, I'll write here all sides. Because again, I'm going to be doing on not only these edges, but I'll also come and do these edges as well. So every edge on this um, rectangular cube, I guess, is going to be all chamfered. So then I'll have a nice ornamental hammer, um, hammer handle, and hammer head. I think that's going to look pretty nice. So in addition to that, I know I need to come back and I need to sand these faces down so they're flush, sand the top so it's flush. Um, and in general, sand the handle down so it's smooth and stuff. But that's all gonna come in good time. So what I did, again, to review, I found you know a few different options online, looked at pictures of things that I, I liked. Then I decided, you know, I think I'm gonna merge a few of these ideas together. So then I created my handle and I, I threw a couple ideas together, maybe a curved top, there's multiple types of handle designs you can do for a grip. Just make sure it's something comfortable and something feasible to do with the tools that we have. So I'm going to be filing this down. So I know I'm pretty confident I can file all this down in a somewhat timely manner. It's going to take some effort, but that's okay. All good things take a little effort, right? But at the end of the day, I'm confident I can get this done. So I found some things I liked. I sketched out an idea. And now I can begin to transfer this idea to my mallet. So as you can see, I did already start transferring my um, my marks here. I know I'm gonna chamfer those. That doesn't really take much planning. But let's, let's talk about this handle bit here. And let's see if we can come up with a good design here. I can already tell that I should probably just come straight down there and leave a somewhat square spot here. I should probably just leave that square right at the top. So why don't we go ahead and just measure a little bit down, let's say one inch. So if I come down with my ruler here, I'll just butt it right up to the hammer head and I'll make a mark at one inch. So now this piece inside here, I don't really, I don't really mind how long that is. I more care about how wide this handle is. I want it to be about how I have it sketched here because that seems to fit my hand pretty well. So I think I'm going to start at that end and whatever's left will be my curve. So like I said, I, I wanted one inch off the bottom so I can find one inch over here right off the bottom. And let's just go ahead and put a mark. We'll line that up. Put a mark right at the end of the ruler. That's about what I have drawn closely. So if I'm measuring each of these other gaps, starting from the rounded part to, so I'm, I'm measuring about from where I start that rounded area to where that first divot comes in. And actually it looks like it's just about exactly an inch. A little less, but I think we can make it exactly an inch. So I'm just going to find an inch that lines up so that you know I can make the three line up and we'll say the four is there. So that's going to include the square spot to start, a little rounded spot to about there where my dash line is, and then this is going to be the next valley. So that's going to, this is going to be a valley here and that's going to be a valley. I didn't start my valley right on that mark because I know that I'm going to round down to it. I can actually zoom in a little bit better for you guys. Okay, so let's look at the next couple marks. Now, from there I have two, three, um, or sorry, I have one, two, three more valleys to go. So from valley to valley here, it looks like I'm about seven eighths apart from valley to valley. So I'm gonna continue that same distance. Here's the next valley. And I'm, I'm referring to these as valleys, by the way, these. 
these little um, indentions here. Basically the furthest part that I need to start um, filing. Put another seven eighths up here. Getting pretty close. So that, that is finishing up where we, we have an inch to start, then we round down to a valley, up, back down to a valley, up, back down to a valley, up, back down to a valley. Now up and back down to a valley again, and then another eighth inch gap for the rounding. So again, I'm just gonna line it up to seven eighths. Give myself a mark. I'm gonna come over one eighth, give myself another mark. It's gonna look something like that. So now I have my marks transferred from my drawing to my um, my handle, and it's a little bit more accurate. You see that my drawing wasn't perfect because I'm you know about a half inch off or so once I actually line it up to my hammer, and that's okay. It's okay that your drawing is not perfect, but when I look at this with my hand, it actually works out pretty good with my hand size for that grip. So it should be okay. It should work out just fine. Now let's just take a look at this curve. So in general, on this profile, I want to curve it this way. There's also going to have to be some sanding in other directions. Um, I might tighten it this way as little too. So why don't we go ahead and just say, I'm going to come in a quarter, you know what, let's just say I'm going to come in 3 16 of an inch. So I'm going to get a couple marks in there. I'm going to draw a rough straight line. I'm going to draw it kind of lightly because I don't need a straight line. I just want to kind of know where I'm at. So just draw a light line to my valley. So I have this soft line in there and now I can just come and start sketching in my actual curve. Just like that. So there's where I want that curve at. And that's gonna go down this whole face. I can also look at how I wanna profile basically the sides of the hammer too, but honestly those marks would get um, kinda of wasted away. But I think what I'm gonna to wanna to do is, is curve that at 3 16 on basically all sides but one. So what I can do is I can transfer my marks about there. And this side will be right about here. So I'm going to go from those two spots. We'll measure in 3 16 from here. Okay, we'll just make a quick line. 3 16 3 16 I might do less if I think this is going to weaken the hammer too much. I might have gone a little too much. Maybe I should be doing an eighth over here. I can go ahead and make that adjustment now. That's exactly why we do this step, is to plan for these things. You know, if I just start scraping away, I might lose track of where I am, and all of a sudden I don't got anything left on my handle. So I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Make my soft score mark. Same thing up here. It's going to be off from the marks I just made, but I, I'm calling a change here because I could tell it was already going to be too much. So now I'm just going to gently sand these in. It won't even take much, but I'm going to do the same curves on those faces as well. So yes, when I start sanding, these marks will go away. Um, but at least I'll have a guide now. So I can kind of start seeing that here's the back of my hammer, the back of my uh, um, handle. And that's nice and straight the whole way down. This back face really won't change much. I'll round the edges, just like I planned to in my drawing. But this front face will be chamfered a little bit, or sorry, curved a little bit. And these side faces will be curved a little bit. But the back face alone will be straight. 
The top edge of the hammer will be straight. Sorry, you guys can see that. The front face will be curved. These two sides will be curved. This top part will remain square. The bottom part will remain square, again, with just rounded edges. And we don't want sharp corners or anything like that. And then I'm, I'm gonna bubble the grip. So that's how I would go about my planning process. So what I'd like you guys to do is, one, go ahead and take a look at some examples online. Look up wooden mallets and just look through some images, find some designs you think you like. And then once you get that done, sketch something out. Just grab a piece of paper, whatever. I mean, I just sketched right here on the cardboard I'm using because my hammer fits perfectly on there. I can get it pretty much to scale. Um, you could use your pencil. I, ha I had a marker laying around so I could see my drawings a little bit better. But come up with a design. Come up with a plan of action. So that way you're not just scraping away at this mindlessly. And then go ahead and transfer that design to your hammer. So all of that is our step two. Step three is going to be implementing our design and actually using our tools to create our design. So we're going to start using our rasp tools, carving away at this hammer, and, and making this a reality. So let's get our plan down and then meet me back for step three. Thanks for watching.